we promise to bring you stories from across the cricketing world. And for this reason, we decided to dedicate some time to covering one of the most important aspects of the game, the bat and the ball. Just how important is it for a batsman, especially one on the international stage, to choose the right piece of willow? Well, you know, it's always nice to have a good piece of willow. You, you know when you bat sometimes and you know your willow is definitely the right one when you just have to tap the ball and the ball springs off it nicely. It gives you a lot of confidence because your timing almost becomes better because you don't try to over hit the ball. Because you know that I just need to get the bat um, onto the ball and it's going to fly off. Cricket bats are made from the white willow tree as it is shock resistant, extremely strong and light. In South Africa, manufacturers like DNP Cricket import this wood from England. When the wood arrives, a wax coating that was applied for transporting is removed and the process of bringing a cricket back to life begins. The first step is running the three quarters of a metre length of wood, called a cleft, through a press to strengthen it. We press it, I do it by ear and also by tapping using a mallet. We have our traditional round press, then we have our flat round press. Uh, so obviously we do everything according to the way the customer wants it. The next step is to attach the handle. In order to do this, a small V section has to be cut out of the top of the cleft. The bottom of the handle has to also be cut into a V shape. It's critical that both cuts are extremely accurate. Really, you need to get it exactly correct for the fit to fit in nicely. You don't want to really force anything or put uh, pressure where there's pressure points and it can cause the handle to, to split or break or even the cliff. When that is done, we'll go up and then we'll start gluing. So with that, gluing the handles, we also need to set it correctly. So we take it, we, we, I'll go, I'll put some glue in, not too much, but I'll get the glue in and then I'll look for how the bow runs. Another pressing follows, this time with attention paid to the bow, or curve of the bat. The amount of bow is decided by the batsman. That is also all up to the customer, what type of bow is looking for, the long blow, the, uh, the low bow. With that, we also need to set the handle correctly, so it needs to have a, a nice flow, and the handle needs to be set correctly. Well, when I go in, the first thing is I pick it up and I, and I feel how it feels, with, you know, when I hold it. Uh, the feel is very important. And then I'll pick it up and see um, my downswing, if I can control the bat. That's, that's usually the weight and the distribution of the weight. And then when I look at it just for looks, I look at how many grains it's got. Um, usually the more grains, the better for me. Um, I just feel that the wood is softer. Uh, some guys like softer wood, some guys like hardwood, and it does make different sounds. Some guys like the intimidating sound that echoes across the whole stadium. Uh, for me, I'd rather when I hit the ball, I don't even want any sound. It'll just be silent, but the ball must really, you know, go quickly to the boundary. Getting back to the manufacturing process of the bat, the next step is the finishing. Machines are used initially, but this is followed by hand, and the skill required to get this right takes years of experience to master. We'll use the electrical hand planers, and from there, when that stage is done, we'll take it from the next stage to the sanding room where we will do most of the shaping, and that's where it comes in, the real, the real craftiness, the real skill where it comes into that. And there we will look to get the pickup. I'll use the scale consistently, I need to use the scale to give me a guideline on which weight or where I'm at with the weights. When the final shape of the bat has been achieved, it goes through a series of finer and finer sanding. This contributes to the aesthetic of the bat. When that faces and edges done, we'll go to the orbital hand sander just to finish off, just to give it a nice finishing touch. When that is done, um, it will go to the next room where the guys do manual sanding. Why we choose to do it manually is because we can control it. When all the shaping, sanding and wood finishing is complete, the handle gets its covering. A twine is rolled around the handle to give it more strength and to absorb shock. Different thicknesses of twine are used. Customers again, some choose the thinner twine, some choose the, the thicker twine. It's all up to them. After the bat is waxed to give it a polished and shiny finish, the rubber grip and decals are the last things to be added before the bat is ready to take on the radabas of the world. Perhaps the name given to Kaya's bat is just what the doctor ordered. I know, I know when I pick my bat up, my coaches used to call it uh, Excalibur because I like the cut shot and I used to play it around whenever I'd mess around. But uh, that's probably the only nickname that I've had when it comes to anything to do with a bat. <laughs>